are going to go with this very simple.
Okay, so I'm about to start my live stream in like 20 minutes, just letting you know. It'll probably be like an hour or so-ish. This is not
give me one second as I <laughs> adjust here. I'm still getting used to all this. Welcome to Flow Tricks. It is Ken. Today we are going to do sword basics. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Now, I am not a master of swords or anything like that, but I have been able to get away with some sword tricks that uh, I feel are really good for performances. So um, today we're just going to learn the very basics for anyone that's stuck at home that happens to have a stick, preferably shorter. I'll, I'll go over a couple sticks that I think work well, as well as possible swords. I do not want you to use a real sword, no machetes, no, I don't know, butcher knives, none of that. That's for the other class that Ken doesn't teach, you know, some other country. <laughs> this class is sword basic. So we are not learning how to fight with the sword, rather to perform with the sword. And by performance, I usually mean circus performance or dazzling XMA martial arts style performance. The style that I teach is not contact sword. I'm not going to teach you how to spin a sword with your elbows. It's really awesome. I just, it's not my specialty, but I will show you just some really nice smooth moves. So even if you are a contact sword spinner, you might be able to use a few of these techniques in your flow as you transition between your awesome contact and knot. For everyone else, I still feel like this is really good. This is gonna be a really good primer. I don't wanna to talk too much. I always tend to talk a lot, but um, just a few shout outs and then we're gonna just get started. I wanna read off everyone that's here. Still catching my breath here. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank Flow Toys and Dark Monk for sponsoring the channel. Hope you all are doing well. This virus thing is, has been pretty crazy and uh, I hope you guys are acclimating and finding creative outlets. Uh, maybe spending more time with loved ones has, has helped you grow just in some pursuits. You get to figure out, you know, what you can do. I feel, I feel like anytime that you meet challenges, you find creative ways to deal with it. And that's also with spinning, you know? Like when you're spinning, if you never were challenged, it really wouldn't nearly be as fun when you actually were able to do what you needed to do. And I feel like that's kind of the same with life too, you know, without challenges. Without challenges, we don't really have much to build our character off of, I feel like, you know, life can get a little too easy. With that said, I'm not, I mean, I'm not definitely not happy that everything is the way it is, but I'm definitely moving with it and making the most I can. I think that's the point. Um, I'm going to get, we're going to keep moving forward though, but I hope you all are doing well. Please send me a message since this is a live stream and not just a video that I usually make. It means it's interactive. So that means if you message me, I'll be able to respond and answer your questions as you're going through these moves. I hope you all have a stick or some sort of mock sword that is not sharp. <laughs> and uh, again, any questions, just be sure to message. I'm looking at YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read off right now. Let's see. Wow. Got quite a few people in today. I'm just going to read off very quickly so we can get started. But I just wanted to shout out to Wesley Smith, Anthony Taylor, Muhammad, Joe, Sandrino, Terry, Badana, Emerson, Jennifer, Nex, Nicholas, Susan, Matthew, Renato, Joe, Ehrlich, Madeline, Spencer, Leah, anyone else I, I missed? I see like more people are kind of falling in. And Ike Flow is here. Good to see you. As well as Yandertail. That was my very quick rendition. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to move over here. Please let me know if you can hear me or if you have any problems with audio. Let me just go back over here for a second. Boom. Okay. So, well, that's a little choppy. Let's get rid of that. Hold on. Boom. Okay. Um, I'm going to get back to the main camera. Yeah, I've got a new to I've got a new thing for you all that I wanted to do a little bit later that will hopefully help as a teaching tool, but that's not quite yet. So, if you're at home. Oh. Come on now. If you're at home, you might not have a sword lying around. That absolutely makes sense. Or you might have a kid's sword laying around if you have kids. But I'm just showing some basic ideas. You could grab even just like a plastic pipe. Or this is just a piece, of, this is just a stick that I threw on some fancy adornments to make it look more fancy like. Obviously, you can just find a dowel if you have one. You can take apart your broom and, and swing a broomstick. Now, the broomstick's gonna be pretty big. I'm not suggesting that you cut your broomstick in half. But if you want to cut your broomstick in half, you'll have it more like a sword. <laughs> and then I'm going to mostly be teaching with my Dark Monk Fire Sword. Uh, be loving this one. This is not a contact sword. You don't see the big weighted tip. But what you will have is good enough grip for two-handed. And the balance point is right 
pretty close. It's like right around here somewhere. Pretty close. So what did I mean by balance point? Balance point is the center of balance and all props have, well, basically a center of balance to some degree. That's basically if you were to hold two fingers out, where would it balance? This is very important to know because as you translate moves over from other props, you're gonna find that the closer you are to the center, the less force or the less effort it takes, kind of like your hips. I don't know, anyone that's done martial arts knows that when you throw someone, you throw them with your hips because that is where all of your center of balance as well as the most force comes. The farther away you are, give an example, like if I hold my arm out this far, if I were to try to push something, I would have a lot less strength than if I kept it close to my body and I put my hips into it. This has a lot more strength behind it than if I were to use this. That's because the farther away you are from the center, generally speaking, the less, uh, the less strength you have to really propel and push forward. So everything kind of pulls towards the center, and that's kind of the same with props as well. When you're using a sword, the closer you are to the center, generally the more control you have on it. Does that mean you should always be grabbing the center of balance? Absolutely not, but you should always be aware of where it is because that's going to be where you're going to manipulate. Most of the time, especially with swords or staffs or nunchucks, you find the center of balance and you, sli and you grab slightly off. So it would kind of keep the sword falling forward a little bit. And that's kind of what you want. Now, there are some swords, I don't want to say they're poorly made, but their center of balance is way up here. Like, it's way up into the sword. And what you're going to find with that is you're going to get tired really fast because it's almost like you ever held a sledgehammer and when the end is really heavy, it just makes it want to fall over, which gives you very little control. So if, for instance, if you can spin anything, if you ever grabbed a sledgehammer, you would find where that center of balance is and you'd hold up higher and that would give you more control than if you held it far back. The farther back you hold with a weighted tip, the more power you can have when you swing it, but you also have much less control. So as you want to get more control, you grab more towards the center and I mean, that's more for fighting. If you wanted to be more of a fighter or whatnot, you'd grab it a little bit lower so you can get more momentum, more force in your swing. Um, sometimes it works for flow, but not as much, not as much as you think. Uh, I got a few questions. I just wanna make sure, like, I just wanna check what people have said and then we're gonna get started here. Yes, all right, everyone can hear okay. Love to see a thumb roll, audio's good. Excellent, excellent, all right. Um, also, I want to make sure everyone knows, please keep in mind, I do not know all the terminology, terminology that sword people or flow people use. And I know it's kind of funny, but I kind of, most of my style came from nunchucks and it was before we were integrated into the flow art scene. So uh, they didn't, I may use different terminology than what you're used to. Just bear with me on that one. The technique's still the same, no matter what title you give it. And keep in mind, again, this is a sword class. So it's gonna be, a, half of it is gonna be the style. And then the other half is gonna be the actual technique. I feel like with sword, especially if you wanna be like a ninja, you're gonna to wanna to be able to learn how to use your hips and your body to create the motion instead of like just using your hands on its own. Your body's gonna say a lot. So I feel like with sword, especially. Um, yes, I'm, I'm walking over here too, cause I have a couple notes that I wanna make sure. Yes, cause I wanna make sure to remind you all not to use sharp swords. <laughs> all right. So we're just gonna start with some basic stretches. I'm gonna go back here real quick. Especially with, especially with swords, we're gonna do a lot of shoulders. So I wanna kind of just go over some basic shoulder stretches. And I think I'm gonna turn this on. We're gonna try this out here. Check this out. So I've got this new, you know, I work on projection mapping and I've been doing a lot of crazy stuff with that. But now that I'm home, I'm like building tools to help me teach. So. I'm basically, I have this to show you where the hands will need to be as you're doing some of these stretches. We'll, we'll use this again. Basically, well, all we're doing right now is we're just gonna move our hands in circles. Once we hit 12 o'clock, they're just gonna cross over and go down. As you can see, there's always a symmetry happening with that. So just go ahead and do your stretches. This is a real easy reference. I probably don't need it. I just wanted to see how it looked because I spent two days working on it. <laughs> Check. Wait, you didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'll give you a clue. Those things appear when I smile. Like, I use a smile as a way to make them appear, so I have to keep a straight face. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Dang it. Mm, there. Gosh, I just realized how hard this is gonna be. Okay, so we got these, now we're gonna reverse the stretches. What we're really looking for is, as we're going up, we're trying to reach past the fingertips into the air. So we really wanna feel that stretch so it really pulls up on the shoulders. Again, shoulders are gonna be huge for swords, especially when we start. Most of the moves, 
deal with extensions of the arms where you want to have big circles. When you come back here, be sure to kind of pull your hands backwards a little bit. So just a little bit back, just to really feel that stretch. So as it goes up, you're reaching above your above the ceiling almost, and then you're pulling backwards. You don't want to go too hard. If you feel a crack or a snap or feel something break, you went way, way, way too hard. So this should feel good. All right. We're gonna just go a little bit faster now. We're gonna just kind of loosen it up, almost like we're about to whip a belt. And then we're gonna stop and shake our wrists for a second too. Sword is a lot of shoulders and wrists, I find, especially ninja style sword. So we're just kind of getting this nice and together. I feel like we don't really need this division yet. I'm gonna turn this off and try not to smile too much. <laughs> so um, basically, did I just do it? Hold on. Technical difficulties. I'm just gonna go to the other camera for now until I can learn to not smile so much. <clears throat> All right, straight face. <laughs> All right, so we have, we have this stretch here and we've gone the opposite way. Now what I want you to do is turn to the right, this is probably where I actually could have used this, and just kind of swing your circle, uh, kind of like it's on a wheel of a car. You're basically making a big circle. I'm making one towards the camera as you can see like this, right? You're gonna put it down by your hip, you're gonna do it with the other side too, now with your left. And you're just basically reaching up, forward, down, backwards. Up, forward, down, backwards. So if I were to stand here, it would look like this. If I were to stand in front, it would kind of be looking like I'm making a, a slash straight down, and I'm pulling behind me in a slash straight down, right? This is gonna also be a technique that we'll probably learn a little bit later. There's a sword technique that works with this. I'm gonna turn over here now and we're gonna kind of do something slightly different. No, I am gonna turn it back on. Boom. Do something slightly different. This this may <laughs> see I get these new toys and I totally it just botches me up. Boom! We're back. Okay, got a smile? Goodbye. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna stand here and you can you can quite see that we're just uh, basically we're following the pattern of the circle, as you can see as I divide my lines up. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hand, the other hand is gonna be exact opposite. So if you look at the line, whatever my hand is on this side is gonna be opposite of the other. Basically, I'm just basically saying if we're 12 o'clock, the other hand is at six o'clock. And what we're gonna do is as the right hand is up, the left hand is down, and we're just making two circles, but they're following each other. So when they're to the side, this one should be back and to the other side. As my right hand goes down, my left hand goes up. As my right hand goes back, my right hand goes forward, not reverse, you know. And they're basically following. If you have a problem uh, trying to, to coordinate this move, just think of one hand is moving, and the moment you can do that without thinking about it, think of completely of the other hand mirroring. So I'm just thinking of my left, because my right hand's just doing whatever it's doing, thinking, how can I make my left hand here follow my right hand in the exact op opposite position? Some people also refer to this as swimming, like they're in the water and you're splashing. But this is gonna be a shoulder workout. So always opposite, always opposite. And eventually you can pull it in to sword motions. All right, we're gonna do it from the other side now. I'm gonna to turn to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, pick a hand that you want to be the dominant hand or the one that leads. Move it just a little bit. Get ready for the circle to, to move. Then start thinking about the other hand. Let's say at 12 o'clock, think about the other hand to mirror, the, to mirror exactly where it's going. And then you're gonna go the other way. Oh, I just hear cracks and cracks. I feel like every 10 years, the amount of cracking that my bones do goes up by 10. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Speed it up just a little bit, not too much. So there's two ways that this stretch can really help. One is that you're pushing far to the outside and that stretches out these shoulders. The other one is that you remain completely loose and you just kind of let them drift there. Both of these are actual sword swings, depending on if you need to gather speed or if you need to gather wide area, a wide area of motion. When I think of sword, I like to think of, I almost always think of paintbrushes whenever I do motions. I feel like your hands in motion, uh, the audience does not know what techniques you're doing. They just see what pretty patterns you're making or what kind of aesthetics they are, as, in a, in a, uh, as well as your body motion. So I feel body motion in a lot of this, just badass poses, rah, makes a huge difference than if we were just to stand here and do the technique. So I highly encourage you to look at comic books, look at these people that fall out from the sky and they have these huge poses that are just, 
Wow, did I smile again? I did. Well, fine. Look, this is the perfect example. As you can see, my hands create a circle as I do this. This is kind of what we're looking to do. With the sword, we make a lot of different types of circular motions. This will allow us, again, we may not feel the circles, but this is what the audience sees, our big circles, especially if you're using LEDs or fire. Um, the trails, uh, the patterns that we create are huge, huge. And I use this as a visualization. Uh, it's much more dramatic than what someone actually sees. However, um, if you're able to see this, you're, you're gonna be able to understand what kind of patterns that you wanna make for your audience. All right, smile, turn it off. I'm gonna turn this visualizer off for that matter for now. It's pretty fun, but I really don't, I really just, I'm, I'm really just, I just got a new toy. I built this new toy and I'm just playing with it. I'm not using it and it's best yet. All right, so let's go ahead and grab a sword. Everyone grab your swords. All right. First thing I want you to do is find where it balances in the center. Grab two fingers, grab two fingers, you know, grab your two fingers. Take two fingers, put it along the sword and see exactly where it balances. That is your center of balance. Boom. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab slightly behind that. Now, if you have something like a dowel or a stick, you, you're not gonna grab slightly behind that because slightly behind that would be almost in the center. But what you will do is if there's not a, a lot of weight anyways, you can go ahead and grab it lower. Just keep in mind because it's lighter, but if you had something heavier, for instance, if this was made out of, I don't wanna say lead, but if this was made out of metal, you are gonna wanna grab a little bit higher to offset the weight and you're gonna go a little bit slower. This is gonna cause a longer hilt, but even hilt moves, we even have some moves with the hilt that you can do. So generally speaking, you're gonna try to hold it low uh, if, you have a lighter, if you have a lighter sword. And then we're gonna talk about just basically different ways to swing a sword. First, we're just gonna grab it. We're gonna be, I'm slightly behind the balance point. I want you to grab, to have yours too. The nice thing about some swords, well, a lot of swords, you should be able to grab with two, which will also create a different dynamic. The number one goal is don't let your hand crimp up, become like a dinosaur while you're swinging your sword like this. Because sometimes you get focused and the hand just wants to like seize up and take all of the stress of your moves. And then, yeah, we call this dino hand. Try not, to, try not to let that happen. If you have to, grab it with both hands. Um, for this one though, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna see if you can just relax your other hand and we're just gonna basically spin our arm in a circle like this. This seems really simple right now, right? But basically what we're doing is we're taking the wrist and we're revolving it in a very tight circle. I'm going counterclockwise. You can also go clockwise. I'm not opening my hand or anything like this. I'm just keeping a nice grip and I'm spinning it in a circle. I'm trying to show you basically, this is the most simple and this is the most common way people swing a sword. It's gonna be this way. This is gonna be the focus is on getting this to slash and cover distance, right? As we start putting our elbow into it, this is still kind of the same concept, except for now we're putting more into it. Before we were just putting our wrist. Now we're kind of putting the elbow into it. And then we can bring it back into the shoulder and we can put our well, we can put it more into an extension or we can really reach out and go as long as we possibly can. These are all the different ways that you can swing this in a circle by doing the same idea. Now, there's other ways that you can swing this as well. Um, that's probably the most common. I'll show you another way to do it is to focus on the back end like this. What I'd like you to do here is basically we're gonna, we're gonna think about the pinky finger right now and we're just gonna make a half circle up to down. This is gonna be a leading point. We can't finish the motion until we can do the figure eight, so we're just gonna let it drop. We're gonna pull it back to the top. Basically, you're thinking, it's almost like if there was something sitting right in front of me, like a brick, and I just wanted to hit the brick with the back of the sword, boom, like this. So this is gonna be uh, backside leading. And once we get the figure eight, I can show you how to, how to make that work a little bit more. Right now, we can only do half a circle before our hands get caught up, so we're just gonna let it drop. We're gonna pull it back to the top to 12 o'clock, swing it down so we're making like a half circle whoosh and then we're we're gonna basically lift it back up to the top back up to the top whoosh back up to the top right so that's another way that we can do it so first was kind of the blades leading second is gonna be the back ends leading and then the last one which is not used so much especially if you have a fire sword is gonna be the tip leading and we won't get into this too much but basically that's gonna be the tip of the sword becomes the focal point and it'll move like that again we have to basically be able to pull it behind our backs in order to finish the motion you're not gonna see this too much because um, again with the fire sword 
And if, if anyone is planning on learning this and trying to do fire sword, the flame is like engulfing your hand the whole time. You'll just end up screaming and dropping it. So I don't recommend you do that. If you don't though, go ahead and practice the same thing. Instead of the back end leading and doing the half circle this time, the front end is leading. You're putting all your focus here, creating a circle, dropping it. Top, circle, dropping it. It goes behind eventually. So that's why I'm not able to show you a full, a full motion because obviously you have bones. Now if you don't have bones, you got like Gumby arms, you can keep going in a circle, but I, I just, I don't have those talents, unfortunately. I'm gonna come up really quick and see if there's any questions, and then we're gonna go into some more, more a little bit more exciting stuff than that. All right, I'm glad the audio's fine. Hey, Marcel, how's it going, Chris McNear? Alicia, Crystal, Laurel, Laura, sorry. Got a couple questions here, I think. Hello, Ariel, oh, you know, I keep doing that. I'm having some te technical difficulties with all the technology today. Ariel says, first time when I was touching nunchuck you, nunchucks in 1970 and trying something newer in my life with this. Nice. Yeah, I'm training to learn real fighting, not spinning. This is probably not the tutorial you'll want to do. Most of my stuff has to do more with tricks. I'm not going to show you how to, how to cut someone up with a sword. Although there's a lot of tutorials out there. Generally speaking, you should probably go to a martial arts school. You don't want to learn how to chop people up with online. <laughs> you kind of need someone to train with. Um, I know it's not a sword question, just out of curiosity, have you seen Stephanie Overly swing nunchucks? Of course. Oh yeah, man. Me and Steph go way back. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's nunchucks. We are talking about swords right now. So let's go ahead and go back. Okay. Whoosh. All right, let's go over the basic motions of nunchucks now, because I kind of showed you the different ways you can go sword, basically you're going for the blade, you're going for the bottom, you're going for the tip. Just keep that in mind with all techniques because all the sword techniques, they can be like, I can be swinging for the blade, or I can be swinging towards the back, or I can be swinging towards the tip. You can translate it, those three different types of focuses can translate over to a lot of different types of techniques. That is more theory just for you to keep in mind forever and ever for the rest of your life. Just remember that you have different focuses you can put on the same techniques and then you can make it do different dynamics. All right, so first thing we should probably focus on is the good old figure eight. And I am going to finally use this thing and let's make sure this works out right. Okay, I didn't smile, right? Okay, good. We are going to go ahead. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about planes. We're not gonna to get too much into it. Um, planes, if I were to stand in front of an audience, I used to have to explain this. Imagine there's a box. Hey, there is a box. Imagine there's a box. There's a wall to the side. There's a wall to this side. There's a wall in front of me. Uh, there's a wall above me, but you can't quite see that because my bad programming. There's a wall below me and there's a wall behind me. This box is how you create the shapes uh, to an audience member, to anyone that's watching. Planes, I feel like, is very important because a lot of times when you don't have the right planes, your control or even your throws, like right here, this is a very straight plane, so it looks like it's a circle. It's following the front plane here. It'll look like a circle, but if my plane's just a little bit off, I might, if I do a throw, I might hit my leg or I might hit something in the way because it's angled to a point where it gets into my body. So the more I'm aware of front, side, back, top, bottom, and I start thinking in layers like I'm actually inside of a box, the better you'll get in understanding some of the nuances of the techniques that we do. So I'm using this one because I want to kind of talk about a figure eight. A figure eight is basically two circles, it's two sides. If I were to think about it with this box in front of me, I'm connecting this side of the wall to this side of the wall with an arm that spins in a circle. So without, without my sword, Every time, we're gonna just start with a regular one. I'm gonna start it, my hand, right hand's at six o'clock and I'm gonna pull it back just like the stretches we were doing. We're gonna get it up to 12 o'clock to the very top, right? Once we hit 12 o'clock, we're gonna slash over to the other side. So we're slashing from 12 o'clock to six o'clock to the other wall, whoosh, right there. I'm gonna try it again here. Let's go ahead and turn on this thing, the simulation. So I'm doing half a rotation till I get to the top and then I'm slashing down halfway till I get to the other side, to the other wall. From here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go half circle. Now this circle is gonna kinda of go behind me until I reach to the top. So every time I'm at 12 o'clock, slashes back down to six o'clock. Pull it back, get up to 12 o'clock, slash it back down to six o'clock. And what you should see, the reason why they call it a figure eight is look at, look at the pattern that I'm making if you look at the drawing. Kinda of looks like the infinity sign, right? 
That's kind of what you're trying to do, is create the infinity sign. Now, of course, you won't normally see that, but just kind of keep in mind, you're down 6 o'clock, pull it up to 12 o'clock, and then we're done on this side of the wall. We slash down to the other side, and it's going to be the exact opposite. We're down at 6 o'clock, we pull it behind to 12 o'clock, and then we slash down. I'm going to do another, I'm going to do another demonstration or another trick because I've been programming a lot. Okay, goodbye. Go, 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 go. <laughs> there we go. Gosh, you know, I should not have made smiling the, the trigger for that because that gets really difficult. I'm going to do one more thing just to kind of help you out with this. Um, it's another experiment, so we're going to give it a shot here and see. I'm gonna, let's see here. All right, here we go. This is going to be fun if it works. Okay, boom. Now you can see I'm creating a circle and slashing to the side. Now I'm going to stand to the side over here and kind of show you the same thing. As I cross my body, it's at 6 o'clock, pulls up to 12 o'clock, and it slashes down to the other side. So from the side view, it looks like this. 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, crosses down. It's down to 6 o'clock, goes up to 12 o'clock, crosses down. So from the side view, you'll see I make really nice circles, yet from the front view, you can see this nice little, this nice little X. Isn't that awesome? Here, look, it's me with kind of a half cut off head. <laughs> Why do I keep smiling? Ah. Oh. All right, there we go. Here. I'm going to go ahead and check. I'm going to go check for questions really quick, but you can watch my amazing little live animation of myself. All right. I'm going to see if anyone has any questions right now. Um, let's see. Noah says hi. Hello, Noah. Luis says, oh, I, unfortunately, I can't read that. Ike Flow says, in addition to the, to the tip and the hilt, there's the opposite extended when leading with the blade inverted, although dodgy with the blade or flame. That's absolutely true. I, I haven't even talked about inverse grip or reverse grip. I feel like with the basics, we're just, oh, hold on. Ta-da! <laughs> just having a technology day, I swear. Uh, yeah. Um, I just feel like in this one, we're, we're probably not going to work too much with reverse grip. There, there, there's a lot of great things you can do with the reverse grip in, sort of, in terms of flow, especially with throws, because your hands are ready to go with that. Oriel says, Ken, please don't worry. Everyone likes your skills. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I try. Nunchucks is really my thing, but there's a lot. Therese! Therese is here now. Welcome, Therese. We're just doing some sword basics. All right, I'm going to get back to my little avatar, my ninja guy moving. Hopefully this helps a little bit. This one's going downward, Rah, straight down. So we're, so if I, again, if I'm taking to the side, 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, slash down, 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, slash down. We start by extending our arms like this because it makes it a little bit easier. We have more time. But as you start to get the feel of it, remember what we were talking about with other forms of motion. First, we're going to tighten it up to, to our elbows. So now we don't use our whole shoulder. I'm going to turn this off for a second here. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally messing up here. Um, give me a second. I'm going to have this guy up here out of nowhere again. How do I? There we go. Troubleshooting my own software. What's going on? Uh, now that you can get, now I'm smiling. <laughs> okay, it's whatever. Now that you can get full extensions of the hand, um, what I'd like you to do, uh, you can probably already do this, but kind of tighten it up now. Get it in, into the elbow and kind of lock your elbow into your side and see if you can get the same swing, but without the full shoulder, shoulder motion. And then as you can get that, you're going to try to kind of extend your arm out and just see if you can get it in the wrist. Now, as you go for the wrist, you're basically going to lighten up your hand a little bit. You may even realize that a lot of your grip is between your thumb and your pointer finger. That, that consists most of the grip, while this is a very light grip on top of this. This will allow you to spin it better. If your hands are locked, you can still get it, but do you see how much my wrist has to bend in order to accommodate the swing? But if you open up, if you open up your fingers a little bit more, your hand is a lot more relaxed as it's kind of using its own, it's, it's not so locked into place. And this will also allow you to do like multiple spins with it, but kind of get used to, as you start to feel the tightness to kind of loosen up your three fingers just a little bit, but keep a nice tight grip with the pointer finger and the thumb and coming across like that. So here, see how I can't quite get as deep as if I just kind of open it up 
and take it into the two fingers. That's a nice deep circle. Uh, use your own discretion. The, you'll have less control as you open up the other fingers. There's more chance of the sword flying out of your hands if you're not doing it right, especially if you're far away from the balance point because the force is going to want to push itself away. So use your own discretion at that. Now, obviously, um, you're going to want to do it with the other hand as well. So, gosh, yeah, we, you're going to want to have to learn this with both hands. So at least for the next couple minutes, I just want you to practice the same kind of motion. Um, same thing that we did before. Uh, well, I might as well record it again. So we're going to start at 12 o'clock, slash over to the other side to 12 o'clock, down to 6 o'clock, take it to 12, to 6. So always slashing downward, slashing downward. Every time you're at 12 o'clock, it slashes down to the other side. 12 o'clock slashes down to the other side. Go ahead and practice both sides. And if you can already do that, well, then practice uh, the other motions. For all the, for all the people that kind of have the idea for this, I want to make sure that you can also do this with, for instance, if we did the blade side or the hilt side, you can also do the same thing. Um, let's see here. It's going to be, oh, shoot. That's going to be, well, OK. So if you were going to do the hilt side, that's not really a basics class. I was just kind of showing you that it is possible to go hilt side with the same thing. So if we're doing the slash here, we can do the same thing with the hilt side. It's a little bit trickier, but basically you start off on this. If I were to, to do this motion, I would start off right hand inverting to where my pinky finger is almost pushing out. Again, this is not a basics move, but for anyone that has that, the figure eight down like this, go ahead and see if you can do this. Kind of lead it with the hilt side like we were talking about. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull it up to 12 o'clock like this. So let's see. it's going to go up to 12 o'clock like this, and we're going to basically swing it down to the other side to 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock. 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock. There's going to be like this really interesting grip that has to be done in order to do this motion. This is definitely not a basics move. <laughs> but I know some of you guys have already done sword, so practice that while everyone else practices the opposite hand basic figure eight. I'm going to come up here, see if there's any questions. Give it a few shots. Watch the little awesome avatar swing back and forth. What do you guys think about the, the new technology I made? Hopefully it'll help as a teaching tool. All right. I just want to see if there's any questions. Let's see if there's any questions. All right. Just finished Chuck's. Next up, so we've got the figure eight, like this. I kind of want to go over something a little bit more fun before we get into more of the flowy stuff. So this is a move that I, this is taken off a martial arts, an actual martial arts move, which is a middle block, but it's slightly modified. The actual motion will look like this. You're going to take your sword, you're going to hold it with your dominant hand, you're going to take your other arm, and you're going to kind of like, it's almost like you're, going to, like you're elbowing the side of the wall, right? Boom! Imagine someone's, some in, invisible ninjas right there, and you just whoosh, right there, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the sword and you're gonna rest it on the back of your tricep, right here. This should be going straight up and down like that. You're trying to keep your elbow out of the way and it's crossed over. So here, there, bam. See, see if you can get this. If you have a mirror or any way that you can look, make sure it's not like, like diagonal, but straight up and down. If we're going into fire sword, you can do this with a fire sword, but you have to be very fast at it. You can't hold it there, obviously, because it's it's behind your elbow. But this is one I do a lot. Actually, when I'm talking about fire dancing with swords, which you should only do with a professional, but I had some requests because people were learning fire sword, so I wanted to talk about this for a second. This is a great way to put out your sword. If your sword's almost out, we're going to do this technique, and I'll show you how to get it done. Over here, like this. We've got that part down so far, right? Just practice this back and forth. Stand here. Now, this is boring. Like, this in itself is not the most exciting thing. So now we're just gonna kind of drop our, we're gonna, we're gonna spread our knees, we're gonna take our knees and kind of push them outward, and we're gonna drop our hips out. Almost like we're hitting something with our butt from behind. So it's like, boosh, like that, right? But we're gonna do this as, as we uh, do the same technique. So now we're not just going like this. Hey, look, we're going, boosh, yeah. That feels more solid, right? Except for, what are you doing? Like, what are we doing? Well, the original technique was to block a weapon, to grab their arm, and to chop off their arm. Or to hit them in the face, boom, right? But the motion, we're going to kind of move this over into a flow motion, so we're going to grab it. We're going to, basically, we're going to take our hand, 
And this creates a little box. You can see there's kind of a square between, if I put my arm in here, you see there's this nice little square that is created. What we're gonna basically do is we're gonna pull this behind the back of our head like this and slide it past until the sword is by our shoulder, right here. So here, cross it over and get it right here by your shoulder. There's a lot of places you can go with this. I mentioned a fire sword because if you slosh it down to your hip, that usually puts out the flame when it's almost out. So for fire dancers, fire dancers only, <laughs> as, as you notice the sword is starting to run out of flame, boom, it becomes a slash like that. Now, what I did there was a very, it's a very sharp wrist twist, and that really puts a lot of force into that to blow it out. There's a lot of ways that you can swing a sword, of course, whether you use your hips or you just, if you don't do anything, you can still swing it. You just won't have as much force, and it may not look as convincing. So first, let's just go ahead and see if you can take it from your shoulder, and you're basically gonna swing downwards like this, whoosh. But as we get down towards the hip, it's gonna kinda loop upwards, almost kinda like we're doing the figure eight, like we're doing the figure eight but we're pushing it down to the hip, and then we're gonna hold it back here like that. As we hold it back, your other hand can do stuff, but if you let your hand kind of cross over, it looks, it looks kind of funny. Like, some people have, don't know what to do with their hands. I generally like to push my hand opposite to make it look better. So, here, right, comes over. This goes, checks by the face. This slashes down, whoosh. And then we're gonna hold it up like that. Um, slow motion. Hey, I could probably record this too. Cross, make sure it's nice and vertical. Get it behind the head like this. You can grab if you want. You can grab their hair if you want and chop their head off. Whatever you want. <laughs> and grab their arm and chop their arm off. There, now we have combat. <laughs> hey, someone had asked about combat sword. I guess that's a combat sword. Oh no, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> All right, I play too much video games, you can tell. Here, grab or keep it over. But as soon as we slash it down, don't get your hand in the way. That's a bad, that's a no-no. Get your hand up. So. Now it's really cool. It works, you can slash down like this. This is great. But if you lean towards the side that you're slashing just a little bit, it also adds a little bit more dynamics. So instead of just going, again, without your body, it, it works. But if you use your body, there's just, there's just this whole nuance that happens in terms of your presence and it feels better too. So here, slash, hands over. We're gonna do a, we're gonna work off this. This is a combo. If this was a fire sword though, whew, it's blown out. If you're not, don't worry about it. Again, I have some fire dancers asking about this, so I had to add in those little tidbits. Oh look, got it again. Okay, you can tell that uh, definitely new to this technology. Funniest thing is like, <clears throat> funniest thing is like, I built it and I'm struggling to use, <laughs> I keep accidentally using it. I guess this is part, this is gonna be helpful though because in future live streams, I think it's gonna be really handy to have these visual devices. I just have to use the little bit smarter. Okay, do I have any questions so far? I'm gonna go ahead and read off what I can see here. Um, Ariel says, you're an incredible man. Thank you for your lesson. You're most welcome, most welcome. Anthony says, try clapping instead of smiling, right? But then anytime I stomp too, like if it listens for a clap, even if I stomp or just make a loud noise, it may, it, it's, I still may have the same issue even, even with that. Ike Flo says, sorry, I don't mean reverse, I mean facing inwards. Right, awesome teaching tool, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, can show how, you can show how to spin from hand to hand in front, yes. I know this is a good to go place. Oh, thank you, Anthony. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome, man. Um, I hope you guys are all having fun so far. Uh, keep practicing this ninja move. I wanna, I wanna continue forward just a little bit, but also just wanna let you all know, you know, um, of course, there's a lot of us that are grounded, but um, I used to be a full-time performer, and then Corona just kind of wiped out all my gigs. So I really wanna work harder on making good live streams to help you out. So ask questions. If you have any questions, ask them because it's better than a video because I can help you right now. Um, and with that said, also, if you have, if you do appreciate what I'm doing, please feel free to leave a tip in the tip jar. You can see it down below. There's a PayPal for a one time, or if you want to join Patreon and have exclusive access, I've done over a hundred videos just for Patreon donors. Um, you can also go to patreon.com slash flow tricks. Um, that's my pitch. <laughs> uh, 
let's get back to the sword. Mm, we're going to do the special effects again. There we go. All right. Honestly, this is my favorite part of Chuck's, so, or of any kind of prop. Uh, learning to flow with it, like, <laughs> like all that flow moves, mm, hold on. all those flow moves are great, but for me, actually, the most fun part isn't going to be the, the, the flow moves that connect them together, but these individual martial arts moves. Um, the thing is, is most of it don't, doesn't connect as well as like when I teach you the figure eight and how it connects into other ones. So we have to learn a little bit of both. We'll get back to the figure eight soon, but I want to build off of this. So we go here, right? Again, there's different ways you can do this. And imagine if you didn't stick your arm out. If you didn't stick your arm out, I really want you to think about this. If you didn't stick your arm out, if you didn't lower your body, if you didn't swing over to the other side, you literally could just do this and it's the same move. Over, cross, down, right? But is it is it the same move? Is it? Do you even feel the difference like here, here, you know? Just wham, I just slayed you. <laughs> and this is more like, hey, I just, I don't know, I'm like patting you on the back, you know? But like, this is ninja, this is sword, so we want, did I smile? Okay. <laughs> So I really want to emphasize the different ways you can swing. Now let's talk about this, this final swing now because it doesn't have to be the sharp snap. But what I did there was as I was swinging downward and as, once I hit the middle of my body, I, I flicked it like it's, a, like it's a whip, right? So it's from here to here. So my, my wrist is twisting here to here. This is what creates an immense amount of force, right? As opposed to if I just thought I'm moving my arm in a line, it looks like this. But if I, use, if I use it like a whip and I flick it as I move down, we have like this very sharp force. Again, great for putting out fire swords. Whoosh! Straight down. Hey, I see Sam. Uh, yeah, I was kind of making this video for you and I totally forgot to tell you about it, Sam. Sorry. <laughs> but I figured I would answer your questions um, afterwards and just get this video out regardless. I'm gonna turn off this visualizer. So this visualizer turns on every time I smile, which was a horrible idea on my part, but I, I thought it was great. So again, what are we gonna do? Hold out the elbow, whoosh, get this over the head. Now think about the way you swing. You can just slash from your hand down. You can also think about taking your wrist and twisting it to the side, and that will give it a nice sharp motion. Or you can even just kind of drag it down nice and slow. This creates a different effect too, and we use the, the hilt side whoosh, before we twist it over. So now it's a from here. Now what we're going to do from here, um, again, we're talking about regular swords here. The back of the blade, oh man, go, go away. Okay, hold on. You know what? We're going to keep that on. Go away, you. I have to stop smiling. It's, it's, it was the worst idea to, to make smiles make this thing turn on. So I'm going to kind of take my hand and I'm going to slash it back to the other side. It's almost like I'm using the back of the sword to cut open my stomach in a pleasant way though, because it's flow, so it's like whoosh, whoosh. What's gonna happen here is, okay, I'm gonna go over to the other camera for now, because I cannot stop smiling. Never realized how much I smile until I had to, <laughs> until I made something that worked for it. So as we slash down to this side, what we're gonna do, one is we can do, we're basically using the hilt to drag it across our stomach. Now, again, we're talking fire sword. You're gonna kind of keep it further away from your stomach. But if we're talking just a regular or an LED sword, we're gonna kind of pull it across to this side here. So, whoosh. And what's gonna happen here is it's almost like what you can see is I slash down like this, right? I'm very close. My body is, if you look at it, everything's almost like a box and everything's closed. And what we're doing is we're opening it up. So as this, as our hands cross, we're thinking taking both our elbows and sinking it back like that. And that's gonna create a different visual. So it's almost like the trap has been sprung, now we're opening it back up. So practice this motion here too. Keep the feet nice and wide apart, take the elbows and sink them back. Like this. As this happens, you're gonna kind of twist your hips towards your hand. So the hand with the sword kind of twists over to that and it'll put you in this really nice stance. So. Elbow up, whoosh, comes across, but behind you get your head through the box, you slash down, wah! You just cut a ninja in half, but here comes another one. He's too dangerous, you cut yourself. We twist over to this side. This opens up a lot of really cool moves from over here. 
obviously we, we kind of have our hand behind our back, um, but go ahead and, and see if you can get to that point first. Again, if, if it's sharp or if it's something you don't want to touch in your body, you just pull it further out like this. We're basically using the hilt. We're dragging hilt side like this. Okay, I'm gonna answer some questions really quick and we'll keep, keep going. Great A swordsman, what's up Sam? Therese says, good move for a cane. I'd love to see a video on that one too. <sighs> All right, so once we go here, we have, the sky's pretty much the limit, but what I'd like to do is we're just gonna kind of reverse it from here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, go ahead and I'm gonna use the back of the blade and we're just gonna kind of put it up by the shoulder like this. So cross, slash down, blah, just cut across my stomach like this, and now I'm pulling this up. It's just going straight up towards my shoulder like this. Boop. Um, again, we're talking swords that you don't want to touch your body. Just kind of keep it a little bit of a distance away. It doesn't have to touch. It just helps. Right? Once we lift it up, we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to see there's this hole that's created. There's this little triangle that happens. If you can look really close between the elbow, my hand, and then my shoulder. It creates this nice little triangle. So as I pull it up, we're basically going to take the hand and we're going to duck through it to pull it over to the other side. If you want to think of it in another way, I'm basically taking the back of this hilt, it's on this side of the shoulder, and I'm pulling it over to the other side, here to here. It's almost like if you were to look, we're at a 45 degree angle this way, and it pulls it over to a 45 degree angle that way. Let's see if maybe the divisions will help this time. Let's go ahead and go to divisions, see if this might help a little bit more. Boom, all right. All right, let's turn off the visualizer. Try not to laugh. See how my sword is pointed kind of in this 45 degree angle and it pulls behind my back and gets on the other side at the same angle. So it's basically heading. And you can kind of see it now, like here to here. And if you look at the back, I'm trying to keep the sword pointed downward the whole time. The tip of the sword points downward the whole time, whoosh, like that. Whoosh, whoosh. So from here, it comes up and over. I'll turn off the divisions for a second. Ah. So, I'm gonna go over this move again. Cross, raw, slash, bleh, cut across the stomach, pull it up here, pull it across to the other side. Right? The moment we pull across to the other side, what do you think is gonna happen? Where do you think this is gonna go? Can you guess? It's gonna go, wah, slash. I smiled. Oh, blood's everywhere. <laughs> slash. And what I'd like to see is as you do the slash down, really try to reach behind your back. This is just for theatrics, whoosh, like that. What's gonna happen is, all right, come on, turn off, all right. <laughs> all right, straight face, straight face. What happens is we're gonna slash downward towards our feet, and then we're gonna see if we can mirror it opposite behind us like this. It's gonna cause our body to cross, so we're gonna kind of pull our hand where the sword once was, whoosh. So, whoosh. And the full motion goes, cross, stomp. Good across the stomach, Rah! comes up here, pulls over to the other side, and whoosh. It's kind of like a golf swing, reverse. Rah! Hit a home run behind you, I guess. There's like a baseball coming and it's coming behind your back. Slash, over, just like that. And that's your first full combo. All of these are basic moves, but it's your body movement that sells it more. Again, if you don't put your body movement, you can, you can go like this. <laughs> you can. It's pretty lame, but oh, smile. It's pretty lame, but it works, right? So keep in mind, well, even with martial arts or with anything, your hips, your hips, your toes, everything, everything creates the force and the and just the believability that it's a sword and that it's that you're a ninja comes from your whole body being being the prop and not just the prop you're holding. When your whole body is the prop, it's a completely different experience than when you're just, when your prop is the only prop and the body's just this rock that sits very still and does moves. Even if we did, you know, no matter how we could sell it, if the body isn't in integrated with it, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference than if you could feel it like flip open, you know, like it's just a huge difference. And all that's body motion and that body motion is the technique as well as the technique. All right, I'm gonna answer some questions. 
front camera. Look at this. I think I'm starting to get it. Whoa, all right. Less technical difficulties. Does anyone have any questions? I know it's kind of a long combo. I can repeat it a few times. And Sam, I still got you. I'm, I'm gonna, I got some personal lessons that I'm gonna show you because I know you gotta get, you gotta get your sword on. So, ah, all right. No questions. Oh, fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna record this one more time just so people can demonstrate it and then we'll work on something new. Here we go. Start, we're gonna do, you know what we're gonna do. Here we go. Whoosh, slash down, right? Cut across, over, over, slash. All right, watch that for a second. Dude, it's like I have clones, this is great. I'm gonna stand over to the side and it'll be kind of the same thing. Um, slash, so, slash, okay. I'm kind of watching to see here. <laughs> That's really hard for me to follow. That's a long one. But I kind of follow along and see the little red guy is me. <laughs> oh, this is good. Sorry, I'm totally messing with y'all. He's really here. <laughs> So that's the technique. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn this off. My sword basics class is kind of turning into a comedy because I'm really enjoying these new these new things I built. Um, let's go ahead and go back to this really quick. We're gonna go slash over here. We're gonna go over slash down. Now we don't have to come across the body. We can do other things too. And the next motion I'm gonna show you is kind of a little tricky one here. Our hand is kind of stuck over here. There's not a lot of motions we can do. Generally speaking, most people think cut across, but you can also cut upwards this way. And this is gonna be kind of how we're gonna get out of it this time. So this motion is gonna be similar to a figure eight, but we're doing it reverse to start with. So as you can think of the figure eight, we're gonna do the same thing, except for we're gonna kind of just flick our wrist up. So let me show you how that works. I actually wanna use this for a second here. So. As we slash across our body, you've seen that part, the wrist flicks upwards to create a circle to 12 o'clock. The moment it reaches 12 o'clock, we're gonna go backwards to the other side, which is six o'clock. Actually, let's do this one instead. All right, this will help a little bit better. I'm gonna turn this off now. There we go. So again, what we did was we slashed down by the body, before we would drag it across the stomach to the other side. This time we're coming up, we're, we're just taking our wrist and we're twisting it up to where it's at 12 o'clock. And we keep twisting the wrist downwards until it's at six o'clock. The moment it's at six o'clock, it's almost like we're pulling our elbow and our hand downward to come down to this side. So it'll look like that in one motion, but it'll be swing, flick up. It's basically a figure eight, but we're moving it in reverse. We're using the back end to get to the other side. Then we're gonna twist it down to the other wall, remember, because it's at 12 o'clock, figure eights always go down to six o'clock. This time we're gonna flick it up so we finally have control and we can just kind of pull it down to here. So you don't have to go from here to here to get here. Now you can go from here to here. And you can do the same thing. We can continue it the same way. We just swapped out one technique in the middle. So let's go ahead and do this. Cross, this is the first motion. Whatever, we grab, we grab the hair, we grab the arm, chop off the head, boom, here. This time, instead of going across the body where we cut across our stomach, we're gonna flick this up to 12 o'clock and it's gonna swing down to six o'clock onto the other plane, onto the other side, where it pulls up and we drag it back down to where we were. From there, do you remember where the rest went? This goes up to 45 degrees this way, we cross it under, and slash it through, whoosh, like that. A Little bit of variation, so you can grab it this way or you can come across this way. I prefer this way, but if you're going really fast, sometimes it's nice to add a nice slow drag across instead. Let me know if there's any questions. I'm gonna turn off the box. Oop. Turn off the box, I'm gonna go see if there's any questions. Ah. ah, thank you, Sam, yeah. I, uh, it's kind of funny. The uh, visualizers, you know, I've worked with projection mapping. I'm doing all these interactive projection mapping stuff. And now that I don't have anything to do since there's no gigs, it's like, why don't I do it with live stream? So I have these visualizers, but I'm not good at using them yet. I've, I've, I myself have to train on figuring out the best use for it. So I'm just kind of throwing it on everything right now. Does anyone have any questions about either of those, of those techniques? 
they're probably some of my most favorite techniques and we, that's why I wanted to show them. I'm gonna show another one that's not too hard to do that I really like. It's more big swings, big circles. Just wanna see if there's any questions. Where am I? Sam asks, where am I? This is, this is where I live. This is uh, my apartment. I live in an artist loft. So everyone that lives in this apartment building is an artist. Um, yeah, a bunch of circus artists, really. And uh, painters and photographers and sculptors and all kinds of things. All right. Not a bad place to be quarantined. I mean, you know, I used to have a really small apartment. So having this space to train is huge. It's huge. All right, so we're going to be done with this one for a second. We're going to go ahead and do this, this next one. This is another one that I really like to do. And it's going to be basically working on overhead slashes. But there's different ways that we can make it look nice. The overall concept of an, overall, of an overhead slash is basically we're grabbing it in a front grip like so. And we're basically, we're going we're gonna to work on this top plane here. Let me just turn on my box here. The top plane is not good, or the, what is it? What do they call that? Oh, of course. Boom. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this. So we're basically looking at this. It's way up here at the top. I need to drag the box down a little bit so you can see it. But we're trying to go overhead and go horizontally across. So we're gonna start, we're gonna start with our with our hand kind of 45 degree angle, and we're slashing it upward to a 45 degree angle this way. Let's actually do the divisions instead. I think this will work better. See, I'm still learning. So you see that my hand is kind of at a 45 degree angle, and it pulls up to the other side, kind of at a 45 degree angle too. That's kind of the, the essential motion, is a diagonal swing across your body. But now we're gonna kind of flatten it out like so. So I'm gonna turn off the divisions from there. I just wanted you to see that it's from here to here. Once we reach up here, uh, you're gonna kind of bend your elbow over the top of your head, kind of like how we've been ducking through, except this time we're thinking about, imagine that the sword is scraping across the ceiling. The ceiling is right over your head. So you can't, you can't hold it this way. It has to be very flat and very horizontal. So we cross it over. It's gonna be very horizontal. It's gonna go behind the back of your head until you get to the other side. We're no longer 45 degrees at this particular moment. Uh, as we end up though, we can twist it up that way, but just kind of see first if you can get it kind of nice and even, kind of nice and horizontal. The moment we get to the other side, we're gonna slash down to our hip. And it's gonna be kind of the same thing that we said. You can either pull it forward like this, you can kind of drag it out and then whip it at the last second, or you can create a flicking motion where your wrist kind of flicks right here at the, at the point of where you would make a strike and pull it down, whoosh, and hold it down. This is a very simple one to start with, but we're gonna to add to it. Usually when I slash across my body, I usually put my hand in the opposite spot just because, well, this would, this would necessarily be kind of a protection method. Um, but I think it looks better than if your hand was here. You know, if you're like, ha! <laughs> or if it was here, ah! I mean, it's, oh, shoot. It, it works, but, you know, let's, let's keep this on for a second. It's kind of making a, the letter, the number eight. But just remember, we want it very horizontal across the top before we cross it over. Here, whoosh, slash. Here, whoosh, slash. Super easy. I don't think that that would be too hard, so I'm going to move it forward just a hair and show you like when it starts to get a little bit more fun. Smile. Thank you. Okay. The next part of this now is we're going to do it. We're going to add a uh, footwork to it. Now. Usually when we do footwork, we go in the plane. I'm always looking at this plane in front. So we're almost always taking 180 degree or 360 degree steps when we're doing flow sword. So the first step is gonna put my back towards the camera. So if I had a line that moved back and forth, I would definitely stand to the point where my body is hitting the exact, the exact line um, that is perpendicular to whatever plane we're trying to create. That sounds really complicated, just think, one step, back side, one step, front side. You don't want to take 90 degree steps for this one. We're not taking quarter steps, we're taking half steps. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our right foot, whatever hand is dominant, so I'm going to say the right foot. If you're left-handed, you're going to use your left foot. You're going to imagine that your, your opposite foot, the hand that's not the non-dominant foot, is going to kind of go up on its tiptoes. So you're going to raise up your heel on this one because basically we're going to use this to pivot. This is the pivoting anchor. So whenever we do turns or whenever we try to do a pivot, we take our shoulder and we match it to our knee. So our shoulder and our knee are kind of centered and that is kind of centered over the, 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 the toe. So if you could take a long nail, because you know, that's what people do. If I have a long nail, there's a nail coming from my shoulder 
down to my knee, down into my toe, it's a very straight line down. This allows me to, when I do my turns, that it's very straight. This becomes an anchoring point that allows me to turn without losing my balance. So if you want to practice this without a sword first, you can kind of do like trunk rotations like this. But the moment you get ready for your turn, give it a nice deep swing, like swing backwards, go nice and easy to start, and then move shoulder, knee, foot, all aligned, and you're basically gonna lock it in and kind of try to hold it as your body spins across and drops. Yay. <laughs> so, the essence of turning is good because if you do a turn and you just kind of walk over, it's a little bit different than if you're able to like swing it through. A lot of it's just thinking like your dominant hand, whatever has the prop, is going to be the one that's lifting, and then the other one's the stabilizing force that stays in the center. And it's almost like, what do you call those things? Like a spirograph. But your foot and your hand that's spinning is going to be making all the pretty pictures. So here, cross it over and do the other side. Now if we had a sword, what we're going to do, you remember how we did this motion here, right? We're going to add this to the sword, but we're going to do it slightly differently. As we swing it up to here is when we take our step. Whoosh, right? So now we're going to kind of, again, we're going to kind of put our shoulder and our knee and our toe together. We're swinging this up towards the head as we take the step, right? Whoosh. Now what we're going to do is we're going to exchange feet from here. So twist. Now what's going to happen is my I'm going to put my force over in my right side. So my shoulder on my, my right shoulder, my knee, and my foot are all together. And my left side is going to move backwards. And I'm going to be, I'm basically I've stepped all the way across. But I'm ready to do some massive swing. The moment that I land, I'm going to put my, all my force back into the, uh, the swinging foot. I'm going to slash down. Whoosh. So it'll look like this. Oops. Try it again. Slow motion again. Everything's on the left side. We're pivoting. I understand that like pivots may not seem like a basic movement or a basic uh, sword move, but it really is essential for a good sword. I feel like is to be able to move and not just stand still. So understanding how to do turns and pivots, fantastic. If you're if you're a dancer, if you're a martial artist, and you have your own way of doing it, that's great. I'm just showing you how how it works for me, the way that I usually do it. Anchor everything's pinned down. Take your step, swing, and then this foot is going to swing backwards. And as it swings backwards, as soon as my foot returns, that's when I like finish the technique and swing down by the hip. Then all one motion, it goes whoosh, whoosh. Hey, look, and we're back here, which means what? If we do this move here, whoosh, and we slash down, you have the same options that you had before, where you could drag it across, pull it up, come across, and slash out. So this can also be another replacement for the centerpiece, except it's a little bit more dramatic because you have footwork. I'll do it a couple more times. Actually, I'm going to record this. Let's just record this. Here we go. OK. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Whoosh. Whoosh. We'll do it again here. Whoosh. Whoosh. All right. Use that as a guide. I'm going to actually leave this up for a second here. I'm going to answer any questions. All right. Yeah. Uh, Sam says, wow, with starry eyes. Yeah, I, I love this artist loft. It, it lets me work. Like, this is I kind of it's kind of turning into a homebody, but it's like I can train here, and I can work on projection mapping and all kinds of stuff while I'm in this artist loft. Does anyone have any questions about this overhead swing or what it can do? This one is a, again, it's another simple motion. You can, I'm just keeping this up so you can kind of see exactly how it's, in, how it's moving. You can see it eventually becomes, everything becomes one movement. But whenever we break it down, we have to break it down into multiple, into very slow stop, turn, twist, go. But you practice that just so you can understand how the muscles move. Once you understand how the muscles move, 
then you can kind of start working on rounding it off so it actually becomes one movement and it doesn't look like a series of one, two, three, four, like very rigid and stuck routines. That's, to me, that's just how you can break it down so people that don't know how to move can kind of see the specific motions that need to take place first. So by all means, by anything that is taught, make sure that you're able to really round off all the techniques and the very specifics that have to come from each one. Let me see if there's any more questions. All right, so let's turn this off for a second. Turn this off. You can also do this with the full 360 degree spin too. And it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna pull this up towards the head, but this time, we're, gonna, we're still gonna anchor the foot, but this time we're not gonna put it down here. We're just basically gonna kick off a little bit harder until we land all the way across. So on this one, again, this is something you wanna practice without a sword first. Just kinda get your hip swings, get the swings ready, get ready to lock in where your shoulder, knee, and foot are in the same spot. This really creates a very, this really puts most of your balance here. Make sure you're lifting up, lifting up your ankle so you can get a nice pivot. Get ready for the twist and then spin all the way and then as soon as you get close drop your hips and drop everything that will kind of lock it down so over drop. while you do this i want you to practice with your hand over your head because that's what we're going to do so swing this over the top of your head don't you don't need your sword yet it's going to be pretty easy if you can get this you can do it with the sword but just work on this for now swing down swing down now when we actually have the sword we're going to swing it across First, let's just get it here, here. Let's grab the sword and do the same thing here. Ready? Here we go. We'll go up and across. As soon as this goes up and across, we're holding it very still for a 360 degree spin. And then as soon as it gets ready to land, we drop our hips down. We basically split our, our, our footwork opens up. So our feet go wider apart, but we drop our hips down almost like our butt kind of shifts downward. This allows a very solid stop instead of like a flighty one. That's, that works too, but if you have a solid stop, not only can you use the force to swing, but it also looks, has more of a sharp presence, has more of a fierce presence to it. And as soon as you drop, you're gonna take, you're gonna take the dropping motion and put that into your sword swing. So as your feet are dropping, your sword's dropping too, and it's swinging, it's taking some of the force from that drop and going into the sword. So here, there. Again, we're swinging it down. I was giving it a little flick there and then let it hide behind. I was totally not smiling there. I don't know what this is about. Go away. So here we go. Over the top. Look, remember? And then we can go from here and finish the combo. Like that. All right. See if there's any questions so far. Let's see. Ike Flo says it helps to know. Oh. <laughs> I know you guys love looking at like just emptiness here. <laughs> very zen, very zen. Ike Flo says it helps to know exact alignment to get that figure eight leading with the back edge. Yeah, I could probably have gotten better with the uh, figure eight leading with the back edge a little bit better. Since it was a basics class, I tried, I felt like I didn't want to get into it too in depth, but I definitely could have explained that one better. Ariel says, every move sword and body gives you the power to attack your enemy. You have, you're right, Ken. No, that's, that's definitely true. You know, the big difference between sword fighting, well, any kind of, like fighting or martial arts and flow, there's a huge one in my opinion, which is when you're training to fight, when you're training to like beat someone, you're going anti-flow, you're doing the opposite. Whereas when you're training for yourself, it's for flow. What I mean to say is if you get into a rhythm, your opponent will be able to predict it. So the goal, in my opinion, if you're in a fight or if you're using a sword is to break your flow, to fake them out, to create an opening, and then to take it as quickly and as efficiently as you can so you can end the fight. So in my opinion, learning flow moves is great, but it's not quite like a video game. If you wanted to learn this to protect yourself, I would say you would want to learn how to fake people out, to draw their, create openings that didn't exist otherwise, and then to take it full force, without question, without hesitation, get it done. So that's, it's a huge difference though, because you're, going, you're not trying to make flow when you're actually trying to, to, to take someone out. 
I mean, that's at least how I've always learned it. You want to be savage. You just want to be to the point and precise, and then you just need to misdirect them or mislead them so they can create an opening. You can either beat them through deception, power, you can just pummel through it, speed, you can just be faster than them and just overwhelm them, or you just get lucky. Those are usually the main ways that I feel like in a sparring or fighting situation, that's probably going to be your best allies are going to be those four things. Learning flow sword for fighting can be helpful. You just have to remember in a real confrontation, you need to break that up. You need to not finish these techniques and do something completely unexpected because that's, that's what you need. You need, to, you need them to predict, to misdirect. You need to do all that or just overwhelm them. One or the other, it doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about fighting too much, but I think, I think that's kind of important to, to know. Um, we're just about done with some of the basics. I want to go over, this is not the most fun, but we got to go over the reverse figure eight. So that way we can talk about how these things lead into each other. So, oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> hey, we're back. So we already know that the figure eight slashes downwards. We do need to learn the reverse figure eight. So that way we can create motion on both sides of our body and then we can pull it over into our, our other motions, okay? So the reverse figure eight, if I were to swing a figure eight, it's usually crossing to the other side of my body. If I was to stand with my chest facing towards the audience, it usually comes across and, it, and it, this becomes a figure eight like this, right? The reverse figure eight is the exact, is the exact opposite. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the divisions again here or the box. Okay. So the reverse figure eight is the exact opposite. As a regular figure eight, um, if we're to look at this, you remember the regular figure eight is the moment I hit 12 o'clock, we slash down to the other side to six o'clock on the other side, up to 12, slash down to six. The reverse is the exact opposite. So that means every time it's at six o'clock, which is at the bottom, it slashes up to 12. That's the easiest way to remember that. And then our hand's gonna swing behind our body to get down to six o'clock, and we slash that up to 12. Bring it down, imagine a half circle. So the first half circle, if I'm standing this way, the first half circle is gonna be behind my back here, and then it's gonna slash over to the other side, and then it's gonna, the second circle is also behind my back. So it slashes up. You're gonna see, when I say half circle, it's from 12 o'clock to six o'clock, and it's always happening behind the body. And then the moment you get done passing the back, the back side, then you just throw it up to the other side. You basically go from six to 12 on the other side, and you come down. If this feels easy, you, this is a lot easier to do the, the pummel side. If you can already do that motion, then go ahead and start working on doing the pummel side motion, which is basically using pinky finger to have the opposite side of the sword lead. So in this way, you have to start thinking about how you can get the back side of the sword to always be in the front, which will cause quite an interesting grip, but you can get through it. Reverse, reverse figure eights are a little bit easier with this, but this is what it'll look like. It almost have... <laughs> it almost have an isolation kind of look if you're able to do that. So if you can do the reverse figure eight, which is fine. If you can do this, then go ahead and work on this, where you're taking the back side, creating a half circle here, pulling it up to 12 o'clock on the other side, half circle, and you'll have this motion, which looks really good for a future reference. All that is like the big flow stuff that you can do in, in combination with those cool sword tricks, but that's gonna be back of the sword always leads pulls over to the other side to 12 o'clock, back of the sword always leads. Always make sure that this is ahead and you'll be able to do this motion here to here. And again, if I was to stand in front of you, just keep in mind, six o'clock crosses up to 12 on the other side, drag it down, you're back to six o'clock, pulls up to 12 o'clock. Let's go ahead and turn on the, turn on the lights. And if, we got, if you got that, go ahead and try the reverse version of it where the reverse blade is going upwards instead of the sword leading, the reverse is leading from six to 12, pull it back, six to 12. This looks the same. This is really important to note too. When you're in front of the audience, this kind of looks the same as this. There's not a huge difference, but if you turn your body and you put, your, you put that side plane in front of the audience, it looks a lot different if you're going this way as opposed to this way. You can even see the circles that it make. You can see that my hand is making a giant circle as I'm doing hilt side, where the other hand is a little bit more in. I mean, you can still extend it, but it's still a different feel and a different look when you're able to do the hilt side. And we don't really, I'm not gonna go blade side, but 
obviously you can still do the tip of the sword also leading, but we don't want to do that quite yet. We'll get into that. That's, that's a little bit more intermediate stuff because it gets really twisty and windy. Um, but this one is a really good one. And so is this one. This one is probably the one that you really want to work on. So work on the reverse this direction. And then I'm going to show you how to combine the front and the reverse together. And then we might do a few tricks and we'll try to pull it all together to finish off this basic sword basics demonstration. Ah, I'm smiling again. All right. Go back to the front cam. Go ahead and practice the reverse figure eight. Let me know if you have any problems or questions. I really want to hang around and answer questions because, again, if I just made a video, I could just make a video and teach all this. But the beauty of, of live streams is you can be practicing right now and ask me any questions. If you're stuck on any of the moves, if you need me to, to say it again, I can easily help you out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to record a quick recording for you just so, all right, just so you got it. So over, slash up to 12, up, slash up, slash up. Every time it's going up. You can totally, you can clearly see it, I'm sure, that every time that I, I go from 12 to 6, then it's slashing upwards. You really got to get used to that motion. So go ahead and take a look. Um, let me know if there's any questions about the reverse figure eight. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna answer some questions while you can watch this this recording of me <laughs> doing the reverse figure eight. Do you let me know if you have any reverse figure eight questions? Aiki flow says Aikido footwork. I, you know, it probably is. Like um, when in the '90s, I I went to a dojo. They had 18 different instructors. I learned a lot of different styles, but I do feel like I did study a little bit of Aikido. But I loved I loved their wrist locks and I loved their footwork. So I might have I might have stolen from that but I can't, I don't remember where it all comes from anymore. Uh, Anthony says, so beautiful, people are clapping out the window saying thank you. NHS makes this so real. That's awesome. Uh, Anil Kumar says, hi. Hello, Anil. So then I, I gotta go in five. So when are you doing other live streams? Yandertail, I'm gonna do another live stream over the weekend. I'm just letting Patreon donors decide, but it'll be sometime. I'll, I'll announce it. Definitely check out, like if you just go to Patreon, you don't even have to, you don't have to pay for it. You just go on there just to find out when my live streams are. I try to post it everywhere, but YouTube only lets me post videos, so I can't always announce live streams via videos. Um, hey, Christian says, thanks for showing us some moves. Yeah, no problem. Of course, this, this live stream will be replayable anytime, so hopefully that will help. Um, yeah, if anyone needs to go, that's by all means, please do. I mean, this is just here to keep us busy while we're... All right. This is here just to keep us busy because we're all kind of stuck indoors, right? <laughs> um, figure, you know, why not make more ninjas at least while we're sitting here? It'd be pretty cool, right? All right, so I'm going to go back to the main camera here. We're going to turn off, turn off this display. So if you did this right, you should be able to do a reverse figure eight on this side, right? Or we're actually doing extended arms. And then you should also be able to do a figure eight on the other end. Um, the reason why I'm showing it exactly in that point, oops, that's the wrong line, is because these two are connected, but only if you do it in this specific order. Obviously the reverse, but just, just bear with me for a second here. So if my chest is facing towards the camera or the audience, if I do a, a figure eight to the left side over here, this turns into a reverse figure eight on the right side, and I don't have to move at all. But I have to learn how to do this technique in order to get to work which allows us, which opens up tons of flow moves. If I, I'm gonna see if I can grab something that you can see a little bit better. If I, like that motion was just a figure eight to a reverse figure eight, holding it up high again. So what I'd like to see you do is practice this transition. If you can do the figure eight on this side, you can do the reverse figure eight on this side, we're gonna blend it all together and then we can do all kinds of cool combos with it. So we're gonna start off here, again, if. You, the end goal is to not is to not extend your hand, but to just kind of keep it tight in the body, and that'll allow us to get through it. But to start with, go ahead and extend your arms. So we're doing the figure eight to start. So six to twelve, pull it down to six to twelve, right? This is the figure eight over here. Now we're, you know what? Let's turn this on. Okay, there we go. Six to twelve comes across to the other side. Six to twelve, right? 
So it's here, 6 to 12, 6 to 12. But this time, when I hit 12 o'clock and I'm slashing back to the same side of my body, I'm going to keep swinging it over. I'm not going to go from 6 to 12 up here, where I usually go. I'm going to swing it all the way back behind me. And that's going to cause us to allow us to go to the other side and do a reverse figure eight. So we're going to do this again here. So 6 to 12, same side. 6 to 12, opposite side. But now when we go to 6, we're not going to go up to 12. We're going to pull it all the way up to 12 o'clock behind us. Whoosh! Do you see that? So we're literally taking a circle from here and pulling it all the way behind us over here. This sets us up for the reverse figure eight. So now we pull this down to 6 o'clock and we can throw it up to 12 here. I totally said 6 to 12 over there, didn't I? That's supposed to be 12 to 6. It's okay. I was looking at a backwards upside down clock. <laughs> Let's try this again. This is 12 o'clock. It's slashing down to 6 o'clock. Goes up to 12 o'clock, and then we're going to make the big travel over. It's going to travel down to 6, but it's not going to go up. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going until we're all the way back behind us to 12 o'clock behind us. Now we've reversed directions. So now we pull it down to 6 o'clock, and it slashes upwards to 12. Pull it down to 6 o'clock, slashes upwards to 12. Whoosh. Whoosh. That's going to be the same thing. If I wanted to get this to work, it starts off behind me, just like it did before. We're going to slash it up to 12 o'clock in front of me, and I'm taking it all the way behind me until I get to 6 o'clock. I'm back to here. Now we're back to figure eights. 6 to 12. 6 to 12. Just remember, it's whenever it's behind you and you cross over, just hold your arm down and let it go all the way until it reverses into the other side, and then it'll allow you to spin over. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate this a few times, and I'm going to record this so you can kind of see. So the transition point is always, as soon as we're ready to cross over back to the same side as our arm, we hold it down and we let it go all the way through until it reaches um, behind us on the other side. So it's coming from behind, ending in behind. We're, we're letting it go that far. And it's going to be the same thing as I'm going through the reverse. As I hit 6 o'clock and I would slash up to 12 o'clock, we go there, but we don't we don't keep the circle on this side, we keep it going until it slashes all the way down to this side and back. Here we go, it's behind me, whoosh. All right, I'm gonna turn off these boxes and divisions just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna do a quick recording of it. Go ahead and record this big bad boy. All right, four, three, two, one, here we go. Whoosh, right? here whoosh all right you should be able to see this now you should you can see the cross as it happens uh, that's kind of hard to see isn't it all right so basically what I'm trying to demonstrate is the transition point I'm gonna turn it off that's a little bit harder to see probably because the sword isn't coming through because it's a different one but just remember the transition point is always behind and it's this giant half moon circle that happens in front of us that comes that goes all the way behind us again and it's the same thing the half moon circle from the reverse is up here along the top of the circle which is nice to see <laughs> there we go the basic half moon circle in the reverse figure eight comes up this way you can see this half circle here which allows us to go into the figure eight and then the half moon circle comes from here we're in the back side and it's going to do it's going to do the bottom half of the circle whoosh to go into the reverse so from here to here, the bottom half of the circle is from front figure eight to reverse figure eight. And then as we're doing the reverse figure eight, as we're slashing across, we're making this front circle here. We're creating a half circle across the top in front of us to get to the back. So all together, you should be able, that's this motion that I do. You can kind of see it. It's when I like spin the sword really fast sometimes, all I'm doing is figure eights to reverse figure eights figure eights to reverse figure eights, back to figure eights to reverse. And then when I want to, I can start doing those other moves that we did. Usually you can do it really easy from the reverse, but go ahead and first practice this transition and I'll answer any questions. Um, let me see if the divisions can help again too. So you can kind of see again, six to 12, six to 12. No, that's not gonna be very good for this one. I think the best is actually just looking at the little dots, these little hand motions. I think that's the best way to do it. One more time, we make a half circle across the bottom to get to the other side of the reverse figure eight. And then we're on the top, it's a half circle across the top to get back. And back and forth you should. You 
should be able to do a lot of really cool swings now with just two techniques. Well, really, you yeah, know, two techniques. All right, practice, practice, practice. I'm gonna go back here to the front camera. Does anybody have any questions about spinning a sword like a ninja? <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're just about done with this live stream. I just want to thank you all for coming and uh, watching my horrible attempts at technology. I think it's pretty cool though. I really do like, I really do like these, these, vis these visual aids. I just have to work on it a little bit more. Um, we're going to have another live stream. I've decided just to leave it up to the Patreon donors if it's Saturday or Sunday. It's going to be an open forum. So with the open forum, you're free to ask any questions you want. Otherwise, I'm just going to train, do a little bit of training. But the things I can teach you, performance, um, running a business, which business is a little slow right now because of Corona, but usually I'm, usually I'm a full-time performer. I can teach you how. Uh, nunchucks, double nunchucks, staff, double staff, sword, H staff maybe, <laughs> some basic martial arts. There's there's quite a bit of stuff. I, I could even go into music and other stuff, but we'll just we'll just keep it to the flow arts for now. Um, I'm gonna answer any final questions. Does anyone have any more questions? Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's just do one more roundabout. Let's kind of weave all this together. So the essence of sword basics. What is the most important thing? What is the most the most important thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got this. The most important thing that I want to talk about with sword basics is your body. Your body is a mechanism to move the sword and to, to create the energy um, as opposed to just swinging the sword without using your body. If there's anything that you can take from this, your attitude, your style, the way that your hips connect as you open it. Like again, this is the same technique as this, but just being able to put your body into it, you're not even being a mime. You're really just becoming the sword. When you and the sword are unified as one, you'll be able, to, not only will you be more connected with it, um, it'll just be a seamless transition. You won't know like where the sword ends and where your body begins. That's where you, that's where I would say you should be with the sword. By all means, if you do want to do tricks without using your body, you totally can. But I just mean, for me, what makes sword very special is the way it connects with my body. Same with staff. I feel like sword and staff, and even just a little bit of chucks, but mostly sword and staff, the thing that really makes it special is the body mechanics that you can put into it because you can start using your dance, your martial arts, your whatever you have that's a movement background. The sword and the staff are one of the best tools that you can use to control it. Why? Because it doesn't break, it doesn't fall, it's very rigid, which also means that you have to... You can, you can stop more. You, you don't have to wait for it, for it to catch up at all, but that also puts your body more in control of the weapon or the prop, meaning that you gotta keep going with it. Like you gotta be, you're solely responsible. You can't rely on this prop to sell itself. You have to do it. And the best way that I can recommend that is through the use of your body, being able to explore it. So take my techniques with a grain of salt. Use what works for you. Get rid of what doesn't. The most important thing is play. Play, play, play. See what works for you. See how you can make this one with yourself, an extension of yourself. We haven't gone over reverse grips or two-handed grips or, or throws, or there's a lot of different crazy things that you can still do with the sword. But I think that's the point. I think the point is, is that we learn the basics. If you can do the figure eight and the reverse figure eight, you now have a constant flow that you can do while you think of your other moves, such as all these kinds of motions. Um, I think with sword or just with anything, you know, it's, it's really fun. Myself, I like to imagine that I'm fighting ninjas, <laughs> even at my age. I uh, still play a lot of video games, so that's okay. But it's still important, I think, too, to just keep that imagine wild and alive. And also just remember, never forget that, like, techniques are amazing and they're important. But the end goal, in my opinion, with flow arts is connection connection between your prop or connection with the audience through the use of your prop. Regardless, connection to me is the most important thing and the prime reason why you do this at all. Because if you had no connection to your prop, you wouldn't spin it. So there's something that emotionally connects you to your prop. And if you're able to convey that, if you're able to capitalize on that, you will get the most out of your training sessions. And if you're able to capitalize that to the audience, they will get the most out of all that you've trained.
So thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, you know, message me. I'm here, <laughs> as we all are. We're all just kind of here. And I'm trying to make the most out of this outbreak, this pandemic. So I hope you all are too. Um, again, if you like what you see, you know, please consider dropping a little tip for a donation. It really makes all the difference. All of, all of my performer friends are out of work that I know of. So we're all kind of struggling. But you know what? It's all about what you can do. It's not about what's happened to you. It doesn't matter where I am. The most important thing is where do I go from here? And that led me here, making these crazy videos and fumbling around with technology. All right, y'all take care, and I'll talk to y'all soon.